So as we come up through this succession, we find it. Now I'm going to uh, allow the axe to continue, and I'm going to allow those to cut through uh, this blanketing succession of sediments and down into the earth. And we'll come out uh, with a, and I'll also allow some great fractures and displacement along those fractures because as the folds became too intense, the rocks could no longer stand it and they broke and the strains were released by movement along the shear zone. And I'll give you a picture uh, of, uh, we'll say, of what this region might have looked like 50 million years ago. And if I'd had the option at any time in the past to visit, I think I'd have chosen this time because I think it would have been spectacular. Uh, I don't know what the relative height of the mountains to the basin floors attained, but they must have been uh, far greater than they are now. So we will start over here then, and again over here at uh, Little Town of Saratoga in the North Platte Valley. And we'll come up uh, into the uh, Medicine Bow Mountains, and we'll come down onto the floor of the Laramie Basin. And I'm going to put a big fracture in here, just whereby these older basement complex rocks uh, were broken, and the, and the upturned and truncated edges of the Mesozoic rocks, we'll say, were exposed here. This would be uh, all the uh, cores of the mountains. Now the basement complex rocks. Uh, were exposed. So we have the, and uh, remember this is the old, uh, highly distorted, folded, broken. We come down onto the, uh, we can come across to the other mountain range, we come up uh, where we'll have the flanking sediments, and uh, Again, we'll say that there is a magnificent mountain range, and we'll drop down on the Cheyenne side, and these would be the folded uh, Mesozoic rocks. And in here we would have also a uh, uh, highly uh, folded with minor folds of these. Mesozoic rocks. And these again would be the with the basement complex, of course, going uh, under. Yeah, first good there. Straighten that out. Uh, and coming out on the crest of the next up fold. In other words, the mountains have lost their capping of the uh, Mesozoic rocks. Straighten this up. Let this come up flank iron like that. It'd be a little more realistic. Uh, Here we had then a uh, magnificent mountain, and of course young mountains are always uh, vigorous, uh, just as youth is vigorous. They, they lose their vigor as they are torn down. And then we have the younger rocks. Uh, which were being built up. Uh, are being torn off by the mountains and being built up. Some of these are extremely coarse against the mountain front. We have rounded granite boulders, almost unbelievable, 10, 20 feet or even more in diameter, where they were rolled out apparently during floods on high alluvial flood cones and uh, rolled out, indicating at least that there was a some great relief behind these mountains at this stage. The same thing would play over here. 
And I assure you that today, if you were to make, at this time, if you were to make a journey between Laramie and, and Cheyenne, uh, you would have a very different trip than the one you now take, because these uh, mountains uh, were vigorous, high, and uh, actually today the mountains rise above the floor of the Ramley Plains by about 2,500 feet. I don't know what the height was from the floor to the crest, uh, but it uh, must have been, uh, even uh, making the Tetons today, which are relatively young, uh, look rather uh, small. But anyway, we had to. And it was on this floodplain that the great host of the mammals evolved, and we have anything you want, from rabbits to elephants, and rhinoceroses, anything almost you just ask for it, and we can have it in the way of the great mammalian uh, class as it evolved here. In fact, I think I can say without fear of much contradiction that our Cenozoic rocks in Wyoming have contributed as much, if not more, to our knowledge of vertebrate evolution of the mammalian class probably any other area of equal size to be found. And because uh, they repeat with these uh, host of them. So here we have then. Well, time marches on. And uh, we're ready now. The inevitable time the mountains lose of their substance. And uh, interesting to note, actually, they are virtually destroyed. As far as figures of relief are concerned, uh, they are torn down, destroyed all, but, and uh, they are being buried from their flanks uh, by the rise of the sediments which are poured into them. And we're going to show you a picture now of what they uh, look like. Uh, During this stage, there appears to have been uh, remnants of their former grandeur rising a thousand or two feet here and there above. And we have a high erosion, level erosion surface which came down to a mountain front which was seen by valleys. Uh, we're beginning to get some of the relief which we now see. And uh, the filling by the Cenozoic rocks coming in and filling up, the same thing will apply to the other side. We would have a filling of these till they filled up to about that position, we we'll say, or to the crest of the hole. Here and here on the other side, we would have a few remnants. Uh, rising uh, modest above the surrounding region. But on the whole, the mountains had lost of their uh, and the flanking sediments had been built up. And uh, in some instances, uh, they had continued building up until they spilled across uh, the cores of the mountains. These would be the Cenozoic rocks lying upon the folded Mesozoic rocks. So we have then this addition where we have the, what we call actual remnants rising uh, modestly a thousand feet or so above uh, a higher level erosion surface, and we, this will have to fill up to here. I can keep my color. Something like that. I picked up the wrong color. No. And this could go up the valleys and come out, carrying them up. Very well, if we had journeyed into this region, uh, uh, 
10 million years ago or so, uh, we would found it uh, devoid of any marked relief, except here and there would be uh, a remnant of the older mountain standing a thousand or so feet as a right there. There are three of these remnants still visible as you go up the summit and look westward. You'll see the snowy range to the west rising a thousand feet above that erosion surface. You'll see the Rawas and the uh, Long's Peak complex. Now we're ready for the final event. The uplift of the whole region, rejuvenation, tilting and breaking, and in this we find the, one of the anomalous situations characteristic of Wyoming, and that is the rivers of Wyoming are no respecter of the mountains. The self-respecting river flows out of the mountains or around the end of the mountain. Wyoming rivers have cut magnificent canyons right through the mountains. If you ever go down the Wind River to the Bighorn, from Shoshone to Thermopolis, you go down the river all the way through the Wind River Canyon. 3,000 feet deep and seven miles long. It's only one. You ever see Split Rock up on Sweetwater? Uh, did you ever go from Cody to Park? Or you see the mountains cut right off by a big canyon? What's this little dam in it? It's everywhere. Hundreds of them. Rivers just didn't give a darn for the mountains because the mountains weren't there when the rivers were established. Because the rivers came in on this uh, surface. They started here and they wandered across and went out high on their alley toward the uh, Great Plains. And in the ensuing time, uh, the basins have been elevated, the mountains have been re exhumed, and uh, these magnificent canyons have been cut across the resistant rocks uh, and now the rivers get out and across the mountains and uh, the basins have, the mountains have come back as these sediments have been stripped down by re exhumed and they rise now uh, two, three thousand feet on their base. And the badlands are etched out of these younger sediments, which are islands like remnants left in the valleys. And uh, they are the so-called badland scarps, which uh, And so we go back to it. And the floors of the valleys can only be lowered as speed at which the rivers can cut these canyons. And uh, that's one reason why you, the floor of the Laramie Basin is still 7,000 feet high, and the Laramie River isn't a very powerful river, and he had to cut a 20-mile gorge across these old tough rocks, and it took, takes time. And, uh, so, so we come out now with the landscape as we know it, and just briefly in summation, we'll start with the crest of the actual remnants, rising 12, 13,000 feet high, Flaking them will be broad, uh, dissected platforms or from nine to 11,000 feet high, a mountain front, 2,500, 3,000 feet high, the valley basin floors, and you can name it, the Laramie Basin, the Green River Basin, the Big Horn Basin, they all had a comparable history, and the adjacent floors. So the day when you travel on from Laramie, which is on the flank of the Mesozoic rocks, you go up to the summit, what do you do? Here you go. That's a Volkswagen. You don't know which you're going, but you're going that way. <laughs> you slide over to Cheyenne uh, on a constant gradient. After you hit the summit, about 40 feet to mile, and going right across the truncated into this great fault. Here, only one place is the, the sediment still in contact with the mountain front, and that's here, where they are, and we call it the gangplank where they've been etched back, and uh, they are. And that's what caused the line of the Pacific Railroad took a bridge across from the Great Plains to the Rocky Mountains without any change in grade. So that we have then that's the typical landscape characteristic of Wyoming at the present time, instant to the last great period of uplift and breaking of the earth all across. That will conclude the presentation. I see if I extend it a little bit. Thank you for your attention. I enjoyed talking to you.